really put me on. Like it was so weird. And like my bum's just on the cold metal bit. It was really weird. And like being in that room before you get put to sleep, like the ho- it felt like you're in a TV show. Like it's very weird. And I just remember when they rolled me onto this table, there was like this really handsome guy who is clearly going to be part of the surgery. And I'm like, you're going to be looking at my vagina and I don't even know you. Like it was just like kind of comedic because I was like, this guy's so good looking, but you know, he's about to perform surgery on me with this other doctor. Like it was just really funny to me. And then they were like, okay, we're going to, you know, put you under now and I was like, I'm not going to go to sleep. And then, you know, like you just suddenly go out. It's really funny because I feel like you don't think you're going to go to sleep, but then you actually go to sleep and you're like, holy shit. And then you wake up. Now, waking up from this kind of surgery, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, am I going to be in pain? Am I not going to be in pain? Holy shit, was I in pain. You know what it felt like? It felt like someone rammed a pole up my vagina and just like punctured my lungs. <laughs> Incredibly painful. And, you know, I was on like, I assume like morphine, whatever the fucking drugs they gave me. Like I'm I'm assuming I was on some kind of painkiller. But waking up, I was like, oh my God, the pain. And you know, no one was there when I woke up. I think they brought in my mum a bit later on. But I was like to the doctor, I was like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. And they're like, oh, you're awake now. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really need to pee. And they're like, no, 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 you can't. You can't go to the toilet yet. And I was like, what do you mean I can't go to the toilet yet? And they're like, just just not yet. And I was like, whoa, 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 no, I need to pee. And I just started, it was really weird. I started to get this sensation, like my bladder was pressing against where I just had surgery. And I was like in so much pain. And I was literally, I was, I feel so bad for these nurses because I must've just been hell on earth. But I was literally like crying in distress. I was like, I'm so much pain. Like, please help me. I need to pee. And anyway, so what they did is they got a bedpan pee thing and they put it under me and they're like pee in this and I was like no you don't understand I can only pee when I'm in an upright position on a toilet (laughs) like here I am trying to explain to them like I'm that well potty trained that I need to be sitting on a toilet in order for my brain to tell my body to pee and they're like no no just pee in this pan thing it's like you know one of those like bed pan I'm sure you know what I'm talking about but it's like a pan that's like patients can pee in because they can't walk yet to go to the toilet anyway I was like, I can't pee in that. I really can't. But I was in so much pain. Like the pressure was just building up. And I literally grabbed the nurse and I was like, I need to fucking pee. And she was like, okay, okay, we're going to the toilet. And I I think the reason they didn't want me to get up to go to the toilet is because they didn't want me to walk because you're meant to, with a partial hymenectomy, you're meant to really like rest and not move a lot. Um, and so she literally like helped me go to the toilet and I'm just sitting there on the toilet and literally just pee my life out. Like I think I peed for like three minutes and this woman, the nurse just kind of looked at me. I was like, see, I told you, like I really needed to pee. (laughs) Yeah. Fun times. Um, anyway, I got transported back home. I lie in bed for like, you know, It was very painful, you know, it it really was uncomfortable to be, you know, feeling like your vagina's just been like ripped apart. Um, And I was, you know, I felt okay, you know, knowing that I had gotten through the surgery, I was like, see Alice, you did it. Not quite. Three days go by and I'm sitting in bed one night and... I feel this weird sensation, like, like I'm peeing myself, but I'm like, I'm not peeing myself. So what the fuck is going on? And I go to the toilet and I start to feel a bit faintish and I'm like, that's weird. And I open my trousers and I'm like, holy shit. There was all this blood in my pants. And I was like, that's a bit strange. Um, and so I go back to bed And I start to feel a bit more faint and I start freaking out. My heart starts beating a little faster and I call my mum in and she brings me in dinner and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm I'm not okay. 
and I'm like, I'm bleeding quite heavily. Like, I don't think, you know, you, I think you can bleed a little bit after surgery, but I was starting to bleed profusely and not a good amount. And I was like, no, this is not, something's gone wrong. So my mum was like, okay, let's call one of the, you can call back the, you, you have like a nurse that you can call, I think. I don't know. I called someone and I explained the symptoms and they were like, can, do you feel kind of pins and needles in your hands and legs? And I was like, yep. And they were like, do you feel faintish? And I was like, yep. And they're like, are you losing like quite a bit of blood? And I was like, yep. And they're like, you need to go to hospital. (sighs) Fun times. So she was like, are you able to call an ambulance or are you able to drive there? And at that point, my dad was able to grab a car and we were able to quickly drive to emergency. And at this point, I was starting to feel really bad. Um, Sitting in the emergency room, I don't really remember much because at this point it was like quite late at night. So I think it was getting around like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And, you know, people, there's heaps of people in the emergency room because everyone needs to be attended to. And, you know, we were just waiting for a doctor to, you know, be able to look at me. But I literally, I just remember being slumped over and just completely out of it. Like, I just could not talk properly. I was just so fucked. And basically, um, a doctor then was able to see me and they were really concerned about me. And they basically got me on a bed, got an IV drip in me or whatever. And they were like, okay, like, let's keep monitoring you. They, this is where it gets a bit scary. So they basically took my pants off and there was just so much blood. Like I, there was just fuck shit loads. Um, and they were like, okay, like let's, they gave me like one of those like maternity pads, like pads that people have after like having a fucking baby. And, I was just so out of it at this point and I was scared but I think I was so out of it that I was also not really scared because I didn't really know what was happening and my mum was obviously very worried and basically they were like okay they checked like my blood pressure and all that and like monitored me and stuff so I knew I was in safe hands but they were basically like you're not losing enough blood that it's dangerous but you're losing enough where it's gonna have like some adverse effects obviously and obviously they needed to stop the bleeding because you don't want to get it to a dangerous point but they knew that if they monitored me I'd be okay but I wasn't able to see someone until I think they woke us up around 2 a.m like it was really like you know fluorescent lights were turned on in the middle of the night and they're like okay we we've got some doctors and nurses to see you now and at this point, I felt even worse. Like, the more that I was losing blood, obviously, I felt a lot worse. And they had a look at me and this woman was like, okay, like, I'm going to try and put some... That What they wanted to do was basically temporarily seal the entrance of my vagina where the blood was coming out and where I had just been... I, where I had just had surgery. And I think it was, like, some gauze or, like... Yeah, I think it's, like, gauze or mold. Like, what... Or mold, not mold, but like um, like a certain material that can stop the bleeding. I don't know. So they were like, we need to put this here, and I was just screaming my fucking lungs out. Like them touching that area, you know. I had just had surgery on that area. I was dealing with vaginismus. I was dealing with a vulvodynia. You know, I was dealing with the trauma that I had had. You know all of these things, I was just, I remember screaming my lungs out and the doctor was like, whoa, 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 you need to calm down. You need to calm down. And I just couldn't calm down. Like I was so distressed. Um, and yeah, I, it, it obviously upsets me upon reflection thinking about, you know, me being in that position. Cause I can tell that I was just very distressed about what was happening. Um, I think they weren't able to successfully seal up the bleeding, and they were like, okay, this is not going anywhere. You need to be put put under anesthetic to be... They were basically like, you need to have surgery again to, to seal up whatever has gone wrong. Um, 
but we can't do anything now because you're just too distressed. And they were like, we can get you to have surgery in in basically that morning, but later on, because at this point it was like 2am, but they were like, you need to like wait until later on. And I was like, great. So I then had to stay overnight in this hospital alone because technically I was an adult so you can't have like a person stay with you I'm pretty sure that's how it worked anyway they didn't let my mum stay with me I had to be alone it was really scary because you know I'd never I you know this was freaking me out at this point like I you know I'm bleeding out I feel like shit um and something that scared me so basically the next day I my parents come back. I think I slept, but I also don't really remember much. Um, anyway, so my parents were able to come the next day to like see me and stuff, but they wanted to change the sheets because I literally think of a mattress, like fucking a third of the mattress was just fucking covered in blood. Like it was a crime scene and it was really it was kind of surreal to know that your body can lose like that much blood, but you're like not in immediate danger. Like, I mean, I assume I was in some kind of danger, but like they were monitoring me. So like, I wasn't too scared about that, but it was just really scary. Um, But what had happened was because I was losing like circulation, I couldn't move half my body. So like my legs and stuff, I wasn't able to like walk properly so I had to be like in a wheelchair basically which was just so weird um because I was like what the fuck is happening to my body um and I remember at one point I had to go to the toilet so I went in a wheelchair went to the toilet and I just remember sitting on the toilet and then it felt like I had literally like had a baby I know that sounds really weird, but basically what had happened was a blood clot had formed and just kind of like came out of me and it felt really gross. And I was like, what the fuck is happening to me? And I remember pressing on the emergency button being like, help, help, what's happening to me? And the nurses came in being like, what, what happened? And I was like, look in the toilet and they're like, oh, wow. Okay. That is, yep that's something. And they were like, it's okay. You're going to be okay. And they got me back on the bed. They changed my pants, my sheets and all that. And yeah, the whole experience was really fucking weird. Like (laughs) anyway, so uh, anyway, skip to a couple hours later, I got surgery. The surgery went well. Then I'm going to skip forward a little bit more. I went back to see the surgeon who had performed on me both the first time and the second time. And they were just like to me, that's never happened to me in my life. You know, I've performed on thousands of women and that has never happened. You never want a doctor to say that, to be like, you know, you're really special. You're like that 1% that just something really bad happens to and there's no real explanation as to why it happens. You never want to be told that. (laughs) You know, you never want to be special in the medical world. Let me tell you that. Um, But I trusted this doctor. I, I genuinely did. I don't think that what happened to me was a, a result of their wrongdoing. They basically explained to me that um, all the stitches were intact. You know, there was nothing wrong. She was very, con- like, she was very confused as to why I was bleeding so much because there was no real, like, there was no real obvious reason as to why I was. And honestly... I wasn't angry at the doctor because I was like, I felt a genuine sense of this person. In the medical world, sometimes things happen and there's no real explanation as to why it happens. And the reason I think I was so easily able to accept it was because I knew that I needed the surgery. A deep, deep part of me knew that I needed this surgery in order to cure my vaginismus, my vulvodynia, and to live a normal life. There was no way around it. I had a hymen. It needed to be removed. End of story. Yes, was the surgery unfortunate in the way that it happened? Yes. But I also know that a lot of the time that surgery will not go wrong, just like a lot of other minor surgeries that, you know, don't go wrong. But sometimes things do go wrong And I've accepted that and 
again, because I knew how much I needed that surgery, I was 